Well, unless you actually dig, you're not going to find out uh, how central the role that Canada played in the Manhattan Project. The uranium that went into the Hiroshima bomb came from Belgium and Port Radium in the Northwest Territories. And it was refined in Port Hope. And then sent to the U.S. to prepare for the uranium A-bomb. There's even uh, pretty strong evidence that the plutonium that went into the Nagasaki bomb uh, may have come through the Chalk River course because they were selling into the system and the Chalk River reactor was actually designed to produce plutonium. So we're right there at the very beginning. We're playing a support role to the British and the Americans right from the very beginning of the first atomic weapon. Then when the arms race starts, Saskatchewan and Ontario are central as a supply chain for the uranium that goes into the U.S. system. The Government of Canada d developed the Beaver Lodge mine at Uranium City with the view to supplying the U.S. government with uranium for atomic weapons purposes. All of the uranium from 1953 to 1966 out of all of the satellite mines around Uranium City went into meeting U.S. weapons contract. Progress in the defense of our nation. And at General Electric, progress is our most important product. Until next week, then, good night for General Electric. There's a little bit of Saskatchewan in every U.S. nuclear warhead, and there were 27,000 nuclear warheads. So, that's hard to refute. If you ask the question, where is Saskatchewan uranium today? Some of it is still floating around the earth in these, from these weapons tests, right? In fact, the U.S. stockpiled our uranium through the 80s because there was really no reactor boom. They probably used diverted a lot into the weapons stream under Reagan. 37,000 nuclear weapons under Ronald Reagan, let's remember. This was a bigger re uh, nuclear arms race than in the 50s. The picture in Saskatchewan is one of prosperity. Industry is booming. The harvest has been good. It becomes public in the late 70s. There's a 25-year period where there's no public awareness or discourse on the direct involvement in the weapons stream. It was either shipped directly or through Port Hope, through the refining system. And El Dorado ran the mines in Uranium City and Elliott Lake, the Federal Crown, and it ran the refinery at Port Hope. First term of the Blakeney government, 71 to 74. They laid the basis for the crowns going into the non-renewables and having the right to be joint ventures. So that Saskatchewan Mining and Development Corporation could be in joint ventures with Kojima or Gulf or any of the uranium companies. But the big producers are United States, France, Japan, the top three producers. They're all here. We get Clough Lake first, we get Key Lake second, and then the expansion, that's under Blakeney, and then when Romano comes back in after Grant Devine, we get a whole new expansion into McLean, MacArthur, and Cigar, although it never came on stream, and all of the mines in the Wallison Basin. 
But we spent millions and millions building up the infrastructure that then privatized over to Cameco. I mean, they got a free ride. We created a multinational uranium company out of social democratic naivete.